Bye. And uh, I wanted to address some of those. Uh, if you're in an argument with a conservative and they, they come up with those bullshit arguments that uh, they've been using, I, I want you to be able to, to uh, be armed with, with uh, counter responses. Uh, so one of the things is uh, that they say, well, the earth has gone through uh, such climate changes in the past. This is uh, natural. It, uh, it's, it's not a big issue. Well, it has never in the history of Earth gotten to that in terms of the unprecedented rate of warming. So if something was warming, it was over thousands of years, uh, animals and, and, and plants had some chance of moving or, or adjusting to it. In this current situation, we're, we're in, in dipshit. So this is... This is not anything like compared to, to a natural process of uh, cycling through uh, climate extremes uh, as has happened in the past. And, and when they have happened, that has made major changes on, the, on everything. Uh, somehow life survived, but it, it definitely affected um, some creatures that died off and, and uh, others took their place. Um, so this is not much of a consolation and we know this one is being uh, highly uh, correlated to our release of, of these greenhouse gases this has been proven over and over there's like almost a one to one uh, response and so there's no doubt that we're, we're, uh, we're driving this another thing um, they say is um, uh so, so another thing is that this this atmospheric uh, condi conditions that are being created has not have not happened in the last thirty million years. So uh, that's way be above what what uh, human history has been. Um, if no action is taken, let's say we let it uh, do business as usual, uh, we'll reach conditions that have not been seen on Earth one mil one hundred million years. So this is not not something yeah to look forward to and uh uh to I, I did this to you i threw this in there yeah go ahead yeah yeah well yeah i saw these two trumpers in the deck you know this these two slides in the deck of this mr two terms talking sense and i go oh, oh, you know you can't have them saying things like they know what's going on so so this was obviously one that came to his senses and so i added another slide to carry on to show that this guy's you know he, he's had an epiphany and so he um now he's going to use his redneck wisdom to help us so that's why i say you know it's time to fish or cut bait we got to do something about this problem here yeah yeah so you learned a little bit about geoengineering and uh, not to say that's right or wrong that's another issue yeah, but to say but uh, the that. fact is co2 by one part per million takes uh, 8 um, billion tons of CO2 to be um, carbon to be sequestered. Yeah, it's a lot of carbon. And and if, if you look at the at, at the first slide, you know, uh, if even even if what what's happening today is not uh, caused by, by us by humans, you know, it doesn't change the fact what's going on, and that we that we have to do something about it. Right? It, it doesn't change the fact that we are getting bored like frogs in the pot if we don't do anything. But the delay game goes on because power... Yeah, of course. The way of they course, are. of course. And, and yeah. I put this slide in uh, because uh, there's, always, there's always this uh, debate uh, and people on the right say, well, why should the U.S. do it when China is not doing it? Well, the U.S. is 4% of the world population. Its pollution is 15%. So uh, well, we have some culpability in, uh, in this, and we have to address it. And, and yeah, China, China, we have to make China do it too, but uh, this is not an excuse for the U.S. not to do it. And there's people who would want us to to go that route uh, and and that's I'm talking about the industry we'll get to that yeah, in that's a another delay tactic um, so basically in order to fix our problem we need to start removing we had to remove 40 billion tons of emission every year 
from now on until <laughs> I'm, uh, net zero and uh that's that's a lot yeah some uh uh, this is the Republicans uh, covering their eyes and saying, uh, there, now it doesn't exist. Wow, it really works. And mm-hmm. that's funny because the same opposite is being drawn in conservative uh, media. And this is how they see but it. You, but the, uh, uh, um, the, the cartoonist sh- should have also uh, at, at uh, the Democrats, you know, because they are not serious in, the, in, this, in this game as well, you know. Right, well, because... Otherwise, of, yeah. otherwise they would have done uh, politics there, against it. There are, there are a, core peop- a core bunch of people who are, who are uh, the culprit in that, and we will get to that in the... In the section uh, we're going into but this is this is how republicans they they look at the uh, cl- global ca- climate change and they think that it's a puff of air uh well in this case it's it's the capital but i'm i'm making a wider point here they see what they want to see yeah yeah and uh here's uh here's what we are we promised you uh an expose about the uh, fusil, uh, fossil fuel uh, industry. Greenpeace has uh, set up uh, a, a lobbyist for the uh, ExxonMobil Corporation, and uh, he got him uh, to think that he was uh, uh, recruiting him for a position, but instead uh, they were recording it, and he has exposed things that uh, we've been thinking and saying here but that hasn't yet had we haven't had the proof we haven't heard it from the horse's mouth and this is the horse's mouth and joe manchin is mentioned go with the first one (laughs) hi good to see you how are you moments later mr mccoy will become one of the first ever executives to claim that exxon mobil has aggressively fought climate science using front organizations to maximize shareholder profit did we aggressively fight yeah. against um, uh, some of the science? Yeah. Uh, yes. Did we join some of these shadow groups yeah. uh, to work against uh, some of the early efforts? Yes, that's yeah. true. Uh, but there's nothing. There's nothing illegal about that. Yeah. Uh, you know, we were looking out for our investments. We mm. were looking out for. Uh, are in uh, uh, our shareholders. In response, Exxon said, we've supported climate science for decades and accused Greenpeace of waging a multi-decade campaign against them and the industry. Keith McCoy thinks he's being headhunted for a new job. In fact, of course, he's being covertly filmed. Congressmen are fish. Exxon is the fisherman. When you have an opportunity to talk to a member of Congress, you know the the the, the you know it's it's I, I, I liken it to fishing, right? You, you you know you have bait, you throw that bait out. You know it's all these opportunities that that you use that, and, and to use the fishing analogy again, just to kind of reel them in because they're a captive audience. They know they need you and I need them. Senators pressed to do Exxon's bidding behind closed doors. You want to be able to go to the chief. And so the chief knows you, that you can go to the chief and say, look, we've got this issue. Uh, We need Congressman so-and-so to be able to either introduce this bill. We need him to make a floor statement. We need him to send a letter. You name it. We've asked for everything. So who are the fish? I'm Joe Manchin. I approve this act because I'll... The biggest catch, according to Mr. Coy, is the conservative Democrat Senator Joe Manchin who famously shot President Obama's cap-and-trade climate bill. And I'll take dead aim at the cap-and-trade bill. Joe Manchin, I talk to his office every week. Um, He is the kingmaker, uh, and and he's not shy about sort of staking his claim early and completely changing the debate. Legal declarations show that Senator Manchin has received tens of thousands of dollars from ExxonMobil and its trade associations. Keith McCoy names 10 other senators as crucial to ExxonMobil. Senators Mark Kelly, 
Chris Coons, Shelley Moore Capito, 